Good morning, good morning, and good morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Amen? Everybody choose to rejoice? Somebody doesn't choose? Give them a smack. Laying their hands on them in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Amen? God is good. All the time. I'm telling you, things are happening. Mightily, mightily. You know, it's like an a, a eternal chess game. You know, the devil makes all these moves. Jesus has already got him in checkmate. So the only thing he can do is lie to get out of it. And Jesus is now throwing all of it aside. Boom. And he's saying, that's enough. We're in the end game. He said, that's enough. Be ready for vindication. Be ready for judgment. That's enough. We are coming to the end. Not at the end of the age, not at the end of life, but at the end of wickedness. It will be removed. So there's something that you and I must stand on all the time. We must be in an area where we are a quest for truth. Everyone say quest for truth. If you've fallen out of seeking the truth, you've fallen into deception. Everything we do should be about wanting to know what the truth is. Amen? Would you turn to Romans 1, please? I used to be Roman. I was a Roman Catholic, Roman for the truth. Hallelujah. As many were for roaming for the truth. You know, when the moment we were, reality kind of hit. I was like, man, who am I? Why am I here and where am I going? Wanting to know what the truth is. You look up in the air and you see stars. I'll never forget the reality I had one day. I was on a planet. Dear God, I'm on a planet. How did I get here? You know? But in this area, it was wanting to know truth. You know, I was a maniac out there for many years. But I always wanted to know what the truth was. Why do I do what I do? And how do I stop what I do when I'm not supposed to do? In Romans 1.18, let's speak it together, please. For the wrath of God is what? Revealed from where? From heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the what? Who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Is this happening now? Look at all the media. Heck, they won't even let the true president talk. Not Biden. He's an imitation. I get thrown off of Facebook all the time. It's not my flesh book. But thank God we're going on another platform where I can say whatever I want. Hallelujah. Verse 19, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. So they knew what the truth was, didn't they? For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the what? By the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are what? Without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. No, were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were what? Darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and char changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corrupt corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness, in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the what? Truth of God for the lie, and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. And amen. They knew God, and they knew the truth. They refused to honor him and seek the truth. They rejected the way of the Lord and his government, his statutes, and his judgments. They fell into lusts, 
which is living under satanic torment. Torment, Amen. They were pushed and not led. They were anxious and not peaceful. They were flesh and not spirit. They willfully exchanged the truth for lies. Deception. Bondage took hold of them. Entering the false perception and a false reality. Which the world is, is now under. The world is now under. A false reality. How does the false reality come? Well, it comes by a false perception of things. If something is repeated enough times, people believe it. Why? Because they have, they're not on the quest of truth. If people were truly on the quest of truth, they'd seek it through and find it out. You know, many people have opinions, but we want truth, not opinion. Amen? Listen, <laughs> much of the body of Christ is under this also. God is releasing his judgment and vindication for the genuine seeker of truth and the exposer of evil. Their quest for truth has been interrupted by the desires of lust, of the eye, lust of the flesh, and love of self. Many in the body of Christ. It's been interrupted because they're putting their agenda and their will and their desires first before God. We must maintain the quest for truth no matter what we're in, spiritually and physically. Amen? 2 Timothy 3. You know, there's a lot of religions out there, but there's only one truth. And there's only one God. That song that we sing, to know him, to know him, that is powerful because it reveals whether you know him or not. Not given to compromise. Amen. Do you know him? Well, if you really know him, you seek him because he is the truth. Amen. You want to be close to him. You don't want anything to interfere with your relationship with him. You don't want to live a, a life of false perception and a false reality. I did it for so many years. Most of my life was a false reality. Wanted to be something I couldn't be. Didn't even know who I was. See, there are many people in the body of Christ who still do not know who they are. And their fruits show it. Their desires show it. Their reactions show it instead of responding. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, please. Let's speak it. But know this, in the last days, perilous times will come. We've spoken this many times. What does it say? For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pressure, Lever, rather than what? Lovers of God. Now listen. To qualify for this label doesn't mean you have to do them all. You only got to do one of them. Having a form of godliness but denying its power from such people do what? Turn away. Don't associate with them. <laughs> Those taken captive, deceiving spirits by deceiving spirits that promote the old nature of man in its loss of self-pleasures, forsaking the quest of truth. They fall into a prideful, unstable, double-minded, presumptuous state of being, resulting in a false reality by false perceptions of things. We talked about false reality, but I'm telling you it's increasing. Let's go a little further on this. He said, for this sort of those who creep into households, ministries, businesses, and make captives of gullible men and women, Loaded down with sins, led away with what? Various lusts. That's desire of self. 
always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In other words, they can't be free. They live a life of management. It's different. We're in a time where God is saying enough is enough in every area. And Matthew 16. Matthew 16, verse 21. Oh, did you get refreshed this morning? Snap, yes. I could have left my sneakers here and just gone home. <laughs> Nothing like a kiss from heaven. I'm telling you. <laughs> when Papa comes down and gives you a kiss, I love it. Verse 21 says, From that time... Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord. This shall not happen to you. <laughs> but he turned and they said to Peter, What? Get behind me, Satan. Now, was he really? You know, you got to think about this. You know, there's, here's Peter having all these revelations. I mean, he just had a powerful revelation, right? Now he's trying to save Jesus. He forgot he was God. But Jesus turns around and says, get behind me, Satan. Why? Because Peter is being influenced through the flesh. Remember, the old man is considered an offspring of devil. Amen? The old man is considered the offspring of Satan's. We were known as children of Satan. Were you ever called a little devil when you were a kid? See, that's why. Amen? A little devil. <laughs> but we were actually offsprings of darkness. That's why we needed families that could tell us the truth and keep us from deception. Most of us grew up without families like that. They knew, they believed that there was a God, but they didn't know the power of God. They didn't know the truth of God. They sure couldn't cast the devil out of me. You know, we need parents now to cast devils out of kids. Hallelujah. And rebuke them. So here Jesus turns around and says, yo, man, Satan's influencing. You are an offense to me. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but you are mindful of the things of what? Man, yourself. You're, you're thinking carnally. You're not thinking spiritually. Didn't I just tell you? He's telling them, I came to die for you. And you want to die for me? Not yet. Not yet, but it's coming. Hallelujah. Then Jesus said to the disciples, now listen. If anyone desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself. And take up his cross and do what? And follow me. For whoever desires to save his life is going to lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will what? will find it for what profit is a man if he gains the whole world and all of his possessions and constantly checks his bank account and loses his life? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? This is a prophetic word for today, knowing the word is three-dimensional, past, present, and future. Again, that when he spoke about Satan, it represents the old man nature. It is an offense to God because it is not mindful of God, but only mindful of self and pleasures. It's not mindful about kingdom business. It's unable to deny itself, yet able to show good works. Hmm. But not righteous. It doesn't carry a righteous attitude and righteous motives, but a rebellious one. See, it's hidden. It's within. Oh, we can have good work, it can say good things, it can do all kinds of stuff, but it carries a rebellious attitude and motive because it's self-seeking. Everybody okay? Romans 8. Why? They've compromised the quest for truth. Romans 8. Glory. Verse 
Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there's something going on, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Romans 8, verse 5. Let's speak it, please. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds, their thoughts, their desires on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, for to be carnally minded is what? Death. But spiritually minded is to life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity or hatred towards God. It's rebellious towards God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it ever be. That's why you need the mind of Christ. So that in those who are in the flesh can never please God. <laughs> those that live according to their fleshly old man desires, they're leading to death. They will not please God because they have forsaken the quest of truth. John chapter 8. You know, we are entering such a season. I don't even know if you remember, but a couple services ago, after we got done praise and worship, a prophetic word was released. And I saw the sword of the Lord come across the whole nation. And it was cutting, 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 cutting. And what I saw that were sticking up were serpents' heads. And the heads of the serpents were being cut off. And he said, I'm vindicating and I'm bringing judgment. John 8, 43. Hallelujah. Whew, everybody there? Jesus said, and I'm 42, I'm sorry. Jesus said to him, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to interpret my words. Does everybody understand that? Why? Because you are the father, your father, the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth. Because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you are not, you do not hear because you're not what? Of God. They were not able to interpret his words, his counsel, his correction because of the captivity of their thoughts, unwilling to cast down influence of rebellion. Hmm. Influence of rebellion. They were not able to cast. Why? Because their minds were, their focus was on them. They were not really quest seekers. They weren't really looking for the truth. Everything had been focused back on them. They can't receive counsel. They can't receive correction. They're rebellious, they're conceited children of the devil. They live a false reality and a false hope, forsaking the quest of truth. I mean, this is where we're at right now. I'm telling you, it's so vital. That's why this is the part of the falling away. Many will fall into this deception, become prideful and arrogant. They'll become stumbling blocks to the younger, and God will judge them. You better be careful what you say to a younger one and more immature what you do with them because God will judge you and that's what's coming now. What you had will become a curse. Proverbs 3. And the Bible also says in the latter days, babes will lead the elders. <laughs> Younger ones will lead the older ones. Verse 5, please, let's speak it. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding or interpretations or opinions. And all of your ways, acknowledge the Lord, acknowledge him, and he's going to what? 
Direct, listen, if you're acknowledging him all of your ways, you are one whose quest for truth. Everything you do, do you acknowledge him before you do it? Oh, I think I'll do this today. Wait a minute. Lord, is this your will? Lord, you open the door and shut the door. I'm not going to make it move without you. Hallelujah. And don't get opinions from people. Go to the throne room. Go to the Word. Don't go to the phone. Go to the throne. Hallelujah. And if the Lord tells you in the throne to go to the phone, <laughs> He's got an answer for you. But first, go to Him. <laughs> don't, you know, don't go to Google. Google's demonic. <laughs> Facebook is demonic. YouTube is demonic. They're all demonic. They're influenced by the Antichrist regime, and they'll censor anything they can. God willing, this will go up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord. Lean not on yourself. Verse 7. Don't be a wise guy or wise in your own eyes. Amen. Fear, reverence, honor, and respect the Lord and depart from evil. <laughs> it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions. Quit stealing from God his tithes and offerings. And with the first fruits of all of your increase, so that your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. That's the anointing, man. Here's the other thing. Are you ready? Don't despise the counsel, correction, direction of the Lord or detest his corrections. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects just as a father, the son in whom he delights. Amen? Trust in the Lord and his government. Stop leaning on your own interpretation and assumptions, but acknowledge always <laughs> honor, respect, <laughs> and receive correction. It will be health to your bones. In Psalm 19, Verse 12, please. Psalm 19, verse 12. Glory. Let's speak it. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from what? Presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless, and I shall be innocent of great transgressions. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Presumptuous sin. Again, many ask for counsel then trust in their own desires, their hearts. Rejecting the counsel and justifying their decisions. Taken captive by selfish pride and false perception, which brings them into a what? False reality. Not many hold on to counsel and complete it. They take the counsel, then they want counsel again. <laughs> and they haven't fulfilled the first part. Or what they get in counsel, they just, wait a minute. They don't receive because they're not able to interpret. Their agenda and their desire is manipulating all the time. And it's corrupting what the counsel has been given. I can't tell you how many people I've shared counsel with. The next thing I know, they're doing stupid stuff out there. And then they make up stuff because, you know what? They didn't receive what the counsel was given. Jeremiah 17. Glory. Jeremiah 17. Verse 5, love it. Everybody like to be blessed? Anybody want to be cursed? That's good. We're getting somewhere. 
Verse 5, thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in himself or man and makes his flesh his strength, <laughs> whose heart departs from the Lord. See, the moment you trust in yourself instead of, head, instead of him, your heart has just departed from the Lord. But I love the Lord, and why don't you shut up and follow him? Quit making excuses in your opinions. Look at what happens in verse 6. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert. That's pretty dry. And shall not see when good comes. Shall not see because they can't see the end result. They're too involved. They're too short-sighted. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness and in a salt land which is not inhabited. I don't want to be one of them. Man, you look like a wrinkled raisin. Verse 7. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord, for he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Look at that. Let me tell you something. When you're planted by the rivers of water, you're never in lack. You're overflowing. You're refreshing. You're bearing good fruit. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers, planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. But its leaf will be green. And look at this. It will not be what? Anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Only the Lord who searches the heart and tests the thoughts of man, even to give every man according to his way, according to the fruit of his doing. Wow. Cursed or blessed, one or the other. It's real simple. Submit and be blessed. Reject and be cursed. Numbers 15. Testament, but still stands. Is everybody there? Verse 30, let's speak it. But the person who does anything presumptuously, whether it is native born or a stranger, that one brings a reproach on the Lord and shall be cut off from among his people and the campus. That's that simple. Hallelujah. Verse 31, because he has despised the word of the Lord or counsel and has broken his commandment, that person shall be completely cut off and his guilt shall be upon him. Until he what? Turns, repents. Not justifies, not with opinion. Turns and repents. 2 Timothy 2. Second Timothy two four. No one what? No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules and regulations. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you this understanding of all things. In other words, seek the truth. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, who raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of change. But the word of God is not changed. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. All oh, praise God. Let's go to Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 4. No, oh, we're doing good today. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 4. Let's speak it. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness 
to be reserved for judgment and did not spare the ancient world, but saved no one of the eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood of the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly, and delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For the righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. And especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of their uncleanness and despise authority. They are what? Presumptuous and self-willed. They are not afraid to speak of evil, uh, speak evil about dignitaries. Whereas angels who are greater than in power might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. Very powerful. They walk according to the flesh and speak with prideful and arrogance, tongue, disrespectful with no fear of God in their words and choices, living a life of false reality through their false perceptions and presumptions. They are self-willed nature, no divine nature. Does everybody understand? Can that happen to a believer? Yes, it, that's how people blow it. Philippians 2. Philippians 2.12. Let's speak it. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but much more in my what? Absent. See, it's not always what you do in front of people. It's what you do not in front of people. Amen? Work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Not willing to work out their salvation with reverence and respect, always looking for something to complain about. <laughs> Being a stumbling block to the younger babes in Christ, they've lost the request and the quest for truth. In Matthew 18. Everybody there, Matthew 18, verse 6, let's speak it. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it will be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of offenses. For offenses must come. But who, who what? But woe to that man by whom the offense comes. If your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off. Now, I don't want everybody coming here next week with one hand, amen? It's not what he means. Praise God. Or poke out your eye or anything like that. That's not what he means, amen? He says, take heed, verse 10, that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that in heaven, their angels always see the face of my Father, there who is in heaven. <laughs> For the Son of Man has come to save that which is lost. Now the, the younger ones, the little ones, are not only children, but they are immature in the ba babies in the body of Christ. Jesus warns us, offenses will come, but woe to those who bring offense. Of course, woe, W-E, means without eternity. To those that cause the offense to the younger one, and less mature. In Mark 10. Uh, 
brought little children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. These are supposed to be men of God. <laughs> but when Jesus saw it, he was what? Greatly displeased and said to them, let the little children come to me. Uh, this is where you come to him as a child, not as an adult. You always come to the Lord as a child, not as an adult. You come to him in humbleness and humility, not in arrogance and pride. Never come to the Lord and demand. Amen? Unless he tells you to command. Do not forbid them, he said, for such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. That's why we're to be child. You know, when you think about a child, what's a child? It's all trusting. Amen? Trust in the parents. All trusting. Willing to do whatever. Okay. Not all the time. But we're to be the example to them. Amen? For many of us, our families weren't examples. We had to go through hell to get to heaven. We had to run the road. Get dragged through the bushes. Hit enough walls and get bumped in the head. But that doesn't matter. That's over with. Now you're in a new life. All things pass away. All things are going to become new if you'll cooperate. Amen? Jesus greatly was greatly displeased because they were being held back. Again, but the proud will be rejected, losing the quest for truth. Falling into a false reality by their presumptuous perceptions. Presumptuous perceptions and opinions. I'm going to tell you that sh the shaking will continue to separate the goat and the sheep, the good and evil from the righteous. I'm going to say it again. The goat and the sheep, the good and evil from the righteous. There's too many people thinking that they're good. And they got nothing to do with being good. It's righteous. Those that live in the flesh and those that live in the spirit, there's a separation coming. Those that have faith for the best. <laughs> Amen. But we must be prepared for the worst. We are in the end game of the moves of the devil and the dismantlement brought by the king of kings, the lords of lords, of vengeance set is mine, says the Lord. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. So you're going, to a lot of, you're going to see a lot of shaking and the quaking. I mean, look at what's happening right now. Look at all the dudes that are getting busted in the news media. I love it. For perversion. They're getting busted. CNN, they're getting busted. All of these news medias, they're getting busted because of their involvement. I love it. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Daddy is exposing. Nobody outruns him. Nobody. Let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for us who are kept by the power of God, the Holy Spirit, through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice. Oh, now a little while, if need be, you have some various trials because it's called the shaking that the genuineness of your faith, your connection be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found in the praise, honor, and glory in the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Second Peter Chapter 1. Second Peter, chapter 1 and verse 2. Let's speak it, please. 
grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and uh, Jesus our Lord. Now, in the knowledge, of, would that be truth? Yeah. So he says grace and peace is going to be multiplied to you. The more you are an individual that's on a quest of truth. And our Lord Jesus. And his divine power has been given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge, hello, of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Through us, the divine nature to those that are maintaining the quest for truth in Christ. It's the divine nature. It's the, only, it's the only thing that overcomes is the divine nature. Amen? That's God in us. And I'm going to close at Hebrews 3. If you will hear his voice. Listen, listening is different than hearing. That's a person that sits before you and goes, yeah, 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 yeah. Doesn't hear a thing you're saying. Just a nodder. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion and the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. That's why some people are very anxious all the time. They never enter a true rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if, that means cooperation, we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not what? Harden your hearts as in rebellion. Well, hear, not listen. Hear, not listen. Again, there's many people that nod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't really hear. Why? Because when you hear, you put it to work. Listen just says, yes. And they're really not hearing. Then they fall into presumption. False perception and false reality. And we see it all over. Again, God is shaking and awakening. He's calling us to a higher level, I've said before. And you will see judgment not in the house of God and more exposure, but you'll see judgment in all political, governmental, media, everywhere. Because the end says, game over. Praise God. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word today. We ask, Father, that the word that has been parted in each and every one of us will grow and bear fruit for your glory. And that the world will see you and not us in our transition in the process of regeneration. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.